Right, guys, welcome back to another week on the In The Rough podcast. I think we're up to episode 2031 now, um, <laughs> which is, yeah, which is bloody good going. We'll confirm that for sure, though, afterwards. But we've got two weeks to recap, so a lot to fit in. Obviously, kind of breaking down the PJ from a couple of weeks ago with a big filly taking home there. Lots of other talk around... Lots of other stuff. The European tour, Bryce and Brooks drama, Bryce and Brooks, a bit of bit of beef. It's just it's all been going on for the last two weeks. But obviously, we'll... we've not been here, so the only time you know golf is interesting. <laughs> well, we've been the busy. weather's nice. Watching We're actually golf. playing golf now, yeah, and playing <laughs> golf. So who knows? But anyway, we'll we'll jump in. Obviously, Phil pulling out for the old boys eventually, and. And winning, winning one of the majors at fifty, so fairly impressive. I mean, it, w- w- what I find remarkable is the fact that he wasn't going to play because there was a, there was that moment where he was like, "Oh, I might not play because you know I've not necessarily deserved it." And then it was like, oh, I've, "I've I've got it, so why not turn up?" So makes for quite a nice story, doesn't it? Is that why he played quite well? Because he was so relaxed, didn't have many expectations, and. I mean, he's a 50 year Was it because he major. played amazing or because everyone else was pretty subpar as well? That. Yeah, that. <laughs> he, 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 he hit some fairways. That helps, especially on Q Island. He hit some bombs. Bombs and calves and coffee. His equation for <laughs> magic or whatever he was raving about. <laughs> a secret mix. <laughs> I mean, to, to be honest, it's a, it, it, kind of, it kind of cements his legacy as one of the greatest to play. Um, so from from you know that sort of perspective, really good for him. Because what what does it put up? It puts him up like number seven on the all time win list, yeah. oldest to win a major. You know he's got he's got a few little tricks in his sleeve, hasn't he? As a... I mean, it's pretty cemented before this anyway. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I, oh, I don't think it was, but like you know, as in you know when you when you talk Even about one of the greats now. of the games, you don't really his name doesn't actually come up as much because you obviously you go back to Jack. You go back to Gary Player, you know, uh, even early hours, as I mentioned now as well. You know, Seve's mentioned. You don't necessarily mention Phil in quite that same. That's because he was at his height when Tiger was his height. So <laughs> you can't really do much about that. If Tiger hadn't been there, would he be the one who's got like 15 majors because there was no one else? Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there, 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 there is a lull of. I guess the competition now is so much higher than a couple of decades back without doing anyone, you know, just uh, injustice from then. But competition now is so much better. In, I mean, that, the final that, round, they're all just trying to throw it away, weren't they? So, you know, it's kind of who did it. <laughs> who, who, what, none of them wanted to win it. They were just trying to <laughs> throw what, it away. What did, you, what did you make of the... Um, of the fans kind of storming around, uh, I guess the whole incident with them like surrounding Brooks and Phil on the last hole. Do you think that's the case of the fact that no one's had live sport for a while properly? Crazy atmosphere. That's what people want. It, no one was going to stop them. It just like Phil was obviously enough ahead where it didn't worry him too much. I think if they were level, level coming into the final hole, it might have been a different story, but I think it was. It's good for everyone. Mm. I'm sorry for Brooks if it has hurt his knee again, though, as well. Like, <laughs> I don't know what he was doing anywhere near the crowd either. Yeah. Just... But, yeah. yeah. I guess it, it, it makes for an iconic photo, though, doesn't it? Yeah. It does. Yeah. <laughs> but again, I didn't, I'm just. None of the big names really played that well. No. It wasn't. Um... I think we might as well recap the results from Kiowa Island um, now rather than in the segment. They later. were awesome. We were great at predicting that one. I don't think anyone scored a point or I got a point, one point or something. Or, I went with Rory to win. That, that's all I remember. I went with Rory and Will Zalatoris was my outside pick. Um, Rory didn't do tremendously I well. Remember. Oh, no, I had Justin Thomas and someone else who missed the cut. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, it shows you all our picks we picked. Rory, JT, Spieth, Sergio, Whittle, they're all crap. <laughs> Which shows you how poor the rest of the field was playing in fairness. Yeah. I, th- I think you just, with that, with that as well, you, just, you see the effectiveness of a hard course. So, you know, it shows the fact that, you know, when you do have 
wind becomes a factor, how many of these players actually really struggle? You know, uh, I I really enjoyed the meltdown that a certain player had on a on, on a couple of days. Um, you know, not naming any names. Bryson. Thing is, when you're at that level, the green's that fast. The wind is such a lottery. You can actually play really well and then just catch gusts of wind and then you're off the green and then it's an impossible up and down. Like, yes, yeah. there's a certain element of playing well in it and not hitting knockdown shots and stuff, but there's also a massive element of luck as well <laughs> with the wind at that's the speed it was at. Is it? But I guess as well, though, but it also shows the players that play, a, you know, some, sometimes playing a bit more conservatively is the way forward. And on, especially on a harder course, because I think the week before that, you know, the scoring was ridiculously low because it was just playing so easy. I'd, I'd much rather see that sort of challenge where they not struggle, but they have to put in a good round to be rewarded. I think I like the courses where you, if you, if you hit a good shot, then you get rewarded. And if you hit a bad shot, you actually get punished rather than being able to just... <laughs> Yeah, hit it out, so out. not yeah. very much rough because you've hit it 30 yards off the tee or right off the tee and then you can still get it on the green it's a bit like eh. if, if you end up on the other tee box from uh, from your tee shot you, there, there is no way you should be able to get it back onto the green with, with no, when you've got a decent lie if you're on another tee box you should exactly. play that better no, than most I, I'm, I'm referring <laughs> to a very certain incident I remember from last season uh, where, where, where a player that I have a, for some reason have a disdain for End up doing that exactly that. You just you said know. for some reason you have to, you don't even know why you dislike Bryson. I, I mean, it's exactly because of stuff like this, but you know, like what? <laughs> <laughs> he's not done anything. Yeah. There's a name just, that just, just, think he's done that you don't like. You just don't like yeah. him. Actually, it's just just the fact of like the whole. Oh, let's hit it as far uh, as far as far as possible. It doesn't matter if you end up on the other tee box, because then. Yeah, but it doesn't. <laughs> That's literally like the point. That's not his fault. You need to hate the rules yeah. that you have, not Bryson, mate. Oh, I can anyway. hate both. But anyway, talking of Bryson, obviously, we'll move on to the, the beef before we jump into anything else, because that's been entertaining, <laughs> to say the least. And like I said, obviously, Bryson just doesn't really care, and Brooks is just a grumpy old fart, so it's just quite entertaining, really. I think me and Brooks are spirit animals. I think that, you know, they're, they're, I think they might have, I saw somewhere, they probably messaged each other and were like, there's 40 million on the, in the pot for the, the top media people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's just create like a... <laughs> only rival ring boss. Yeah, basically. And then have like a, probably have like a fight as an undercard for some YouTuber boxing match or something and then make themselves some mil- millions and they're sorted, aren't they? I mean, Bryson DeChambeau fighting Jake Paul. I, I, think, I think I might tune in to see that. Brooks would beat up Bryson. Oh, yeah. Because he used to play ice hockey and he's mental. But he's also got no, knee, he's got no knees left, though. This isn't sure. UFC, though. Depend depends on the sort of fight this is. You've still That's got a true. move, haven't you? Mm-hmm. No, if it's, if it's, if it's boxing. Slap each other. No, but is, is it UFC or is it boxing? Because, you know. I don't know. Be but it's so funny because it's bleeding into the match that they've all obviously announced with like Tom Brady and Phil Mickelson and. Yeah. Who is the other one? Aaron Rodgers and uh, Bryson. Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. It has been fairly entertaining. Um, Bryson, I think, looks like a bit of a... He's a tool. To be fair. He's a tool. But... And, and just, the thing is as well, you know, the whole publicity thing, it just gives money to Phil and Bryson because obviously they're the only ones that are going to be playing that. So uh, it, just, uh, it just basically saying, have some free money. This is going to be like the WWE and then like Bryson's going to come running out at like the sixth tee. <laughs> <laughs> Brooks, Brooks is going to be waiting for him somewhere. He's he's running out with a golf club just whacking Bryson out in a like metal chair or something. <laughs> <laughs> I think that is an amazing new format of golf. Obviously, people have done knockout golf, haven't they? Where you, you've got to try and beat someone up while they're playing around so you can get it in the hole quickest. But you could do that at every every third hole it's like a, a roulette wheel or whatever and you spin it and then you get your set goal for walk out who partners you for the next three holes. Class. I think as, as we're going back to the, the other thing about hit, hit, see I'm getting angry about someone hitting yet another fairway or tee box. There's a rule change. I think they should say 
if it goes onto another fairway, it's out of bounds. Not, then if you hit that for, far not, off not, line, not for a, not for regular old Joes like us. No, I mean for the pros. I, I, I play pros, on the other yeah, fairway yeah. most of the time. I mean for the pros because they should be hitting it somewhere relatively near the fairway they're aiming for. Yes, and if not, you know, suck eggs. <laughs> oh, oh, or if you hit it past 350 yards, you you, you have to take a drop. <laughs> Stop no, I, I, I don't. I, I, I don't. I don't mind. Obviously, you hitting it far because let's be honest, I, I'm. You know, there's there's players that are hitting it spot just as far. You know, Jason Kokrak has been hitting it very far. Rory's hit some absolute bombs this year. Phil's hit some. You know, it's there's players who don't haven't built their entire brand and game around thinking that they're the you know the next coming of Jesus that are hitting. I do just admit far. though that for how big he is, he doesn't hit it that much further. Yeah. Than- Rory, who's five foot ten or less than five foot ten. <laughs> no, but you would you would you would argue Rory's got and there is arguably an advantage being slightly smaller with a lower center of gravity for a drive. Like they look for a lot of the science. Not, not when it comes to long distance driving. No, golf golf TV did a whole like scientific analysis of it, and there's like a there's an optimum which I think is is about six slash six, like six point five, before getting anywhere rather than six one. So he's he's closer to it than Bryson. They did a whole analysis thing of it in terms of shaft lengths and swing. That's the optimum. But anyway, like I just, I just, I just, it's it's just the point of the entire branding around him is oh he's he's revolutionising the game this that the other. No, there's players hitting it just as far. He just went to the gym. <laughs> he, he, he just got fat. All right, that that that's it. And, and then he's and he's pulled it off as I went to the gym. He did go. To, he does work. He has worked out. Like, you I'm know, sure he is. You're sure he has. He he has. <laughs> he's not just he's not just put on like yeah. thirty pounds of fat, has he? <laughs> I'd hope not. You know, if he has to walk around the golf course three times a day, it'd be very inconvenient. Oh, you're such a oh, bitter old man already. Hater. Anyway, talking of other things, obviously the other week they announced on the European Tour they've announced four new disability events. It's just going to incorporate or just make it more accessible for lots of different, yeah, different people of varying abilities, disabilities coming in and actually getting a shot at things. So what's everyone's thoughts and what have they seen on that? I'll be honest, I haven't seen enough on it. It it sounds great. (laughs) It's just, yeah, it's just giving more people more opportunity, building on the the wave that's already coming or coming or has been, I should say. Yeah. they link it obviously link it into some of the stats from the other week as well about uptake of golf in the UK alone. Obviously, it's the highest in a century. They were saying you've got mm. like was it courses went from I think this stat was 2.1 million to 5.2 million, um, which 36 percent new golfers driving range numbers were up up to 4.3 million from 2.3 million as well. So the update when there's is, nothing else to do in lockdown, and it's the only outdoor sport that's open. <laughs> Don't be so negative, Siab. I'm I'm saying it in a positive light because I've sold golf clubs because of this. By well, the way, if anyone wants to buy a title, nine fifteen F three wood, hit me up. <laughs> why, why don't you want it anymore, mate? Yeah. Uh, I, I might be upgrading. But, uh, <laughs> well. but, uh, but anyway, Wait, which one are you trying to flog? Uh, my three wood, the one with the stiff shaft. Oh, well, if anyone if anyone makes it this far into the podcast, they can get twenty percent off. There you go. Whoa, 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 whoa! <laughs> whoa. Yeah. You can't I'll be like... offering up discounts on someone else's <laughs> product, mate. Yeah, all right, it's all right. I, I wouldn't be worried to have. Um, <laughs> and then on to obviously last week you had the Charles Swab where. Pretty much most of the guys were there, but I say most of them were there. Not many actually turned up, though. Um, but it was one of those ones, again, where it was just low scoring. It was okay, but it was not particularly entertaining. I don't care. It, was, it turned into match play between Spieth and Kokrak for the last two days. So yeah, no one it else did. did that, that part was entertaining. Um, I, yeah. I will say Spieth bottled it a bit, but... Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, yeah, Kojak just played very well. He was more consistent. I wouldn't say Spieth necessarily bottled it. Yeah, he did on the Sunday. He was like three over on the Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
a bit. I, I will say, you know, Kokrak deserves the plaudits. You know, he's yeah. one of the only players with two wins on the on tour this year. But I think for Spieth, that's what like his fourth top five finish. Um, so it just shows the run of form that he's in. Well, he's, he's definitely the form. He's definitely the form person at the moment, isn't he? But if you look at the tournaments where he's been top five, it's been a, the competition hasn't been amazing. There has been, there has no, there have been decent players. I, I just think that the, necessarily they've not been giving it their all, perhaps. Or, but it's also, it's also of course that he's done well on, of courses that he that, that you expect him to do well on. He's not, he's not all done of them in Texas. <laughs> 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 I told you, it, it, I, I, that's why I went with him because it's Texas course. But yeah, I, it, it's just the fact that it's, it's a course that you expect him to do well on. And that's a, that, you know, so yeah, I, I think good, good for him. It's a good story. Well done, good, mate. Well good. done, Jordan. Good for you. Yeah. <laughs> Gets me points. <clears throat> but then, Siab, as well, obviously, we'll loop round to the upcoming event this week. And I know you wanted to have your little. You're saying your little analysis on the course, the changes, and everything from that side. So take it away. I, I don't know about analysis, but to be honest, it was it was very interesting actually um, because we've touched on this in the podcast before about with the modern changes in the game with regards to equipment, with how players are developed. What's going to give? Is there going to be stuff like equipment uh, regulations, or are the golf courses going to change? Um, and Jack Nicholas from the last Memorial, which already was a fairly low-scoring event, had that great playoff between Ram uh, as well, where he hold that amazing putt. You know, already from that, where it was a hard course, he's gone and redesigned that. So PJ Tour on Instagram uh, actually did quite a bit of good coverage, interview with Jack as to the sort of stuff he changed, who went through the first nine holes in terms of moving the pin look. So just wanted to get greater uh, pin locations, so changing the green layouts, the elevation changes, moving the tee box at certain time, uh, certain, certain locations. He also talked about the fact that they were looking constantly at shot data to see how far all the players hit it on average last year. And most of them, especially on a couple of holes, were clearing the uh, the the obstacles, the, the, the sand traps by a good distance. So what they've done, they've changed the location of the tee box they moved it 10 yards further back, moved it a bit to the left, for example, changed it, uh, and then changed the location of the of the bunkers, moved them further forward. So the rough distance that they expect the players to hit it is now brings the, the bunkers back into play. They've changed, you know, the sight lines to bring water, all of that element into play to so make players think of whether they want to go for that risk reward shot, like Tom was saying, where they risk it, they can reward it with a, a birdie. But if they but if but if you don't hit a good shot. You're going in the water, so everything's sloping in. So I think stuff like that is actually very interesting to see how courses can be changed to adapt to that modern game as well. Um, also helps if you have an insane amount of money and it's a very private course that uh, isn't being used on the daily, so they can afford to spend, you know, five hundred thousand dollars on moving a bunker four feet. Well, and, and the time, like you think if that is any other course, that's months and months of work. If you're doing tee boxes, mm. bunkers, no one else can, no one can justify that really. And the money as well, I think it's it's good to see, but I don't think it's feasible. I, I don't think it's just, yeah. I don't think it's necessarily possible across all the courses that are going to be played in the future. But I think it's an example of for a long term change that can that can happen to courses. Yeah. Because for example, you know they were already digging up parts of the old green whilst the tournament was finishing up on the 18th. Because that's how much they were keen to just get 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 a swing on it, but it's ne- it kind of kind of shows that it is about how the course is designed. You 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 don't necessarily want to restrict the players in terms of their equipment, but you can certainly create new challenges for them and create that risk reward balance as to what they go for. But interesting to hear. It would be interesting. It's to hear hard. It was a hard course anyway, so it's going to be interesting mm. to see. I mean, it, it, it'd be completely pointless if someone shoots a minus 20 this week. But <laughs> Yeah, that would be pretty rub, rub in the face of a <laughs> waste of money in time. Yeah, we've, yeah. we've wasted five million. We closed our course for three months, lost this much income, and they've still beat us anyway. Yeah. So, uh, someone, no doubt, will probably do something like that. <laughs> it, it's, it's an, it's, but in a way, it's an open challenge, though. 
um, to, to all these players to go there and, and show what they can do on arguably what will be one of the hardest courses that they will play all year. So I'd hope it brings out the competitive side of some of these players rather than them just deciding to Bottle have some sort of yeah. yeah have some sort of excuse to uh, to not be embarrassed potentially. It's hard to say. Like most, like outside of the majors this year, like half of them just don't seem to be bothered. Yeah, that's the sort of feel. So it's a bit. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what you can do with encouraging that more, though. Like you think in in terms of making them participate in a way that feels like they're trying. Yeah, it's like you said, unless it's doing about like Tom was saying the other podcast where you have to do you have to attend an X number of events to qualify for majors rather than it just being on a place and stuff basis as well actually put a bit more into it to actually encourage them to but I guess showing up doesn't really make the difference does it it is down to the points of scoring so yeah less points if you're further down for FedEx Cup but then you have FedEx to Cup rankings you know <laughs> use that for your majors they should do a multiplier effect. Consistent top finish, you get a bigger multiplier on your FedEx points in the next round. So, <laughs> and do that. But obviously, why we're there then, what's predictions wise for this? Then, obviously, next week we'll do a full recap of points from the week just gone and this week. But obviously, predictions for the event this week. You're first. Aren't you? Is it me? That's the luck. <laughs> Who's playing most of the big guys? Yeah, I'm guessing so. Um, I will John go. For... Ram is defending champion. Uh, just... mm-hmm. I'll go is, for... uh, John Ram him number uh, one here last year. I'll go for Siab's favourite. I'll go for young Victor Hovland. Ooh, ooh, interesting choice. I may have picked out if I'd researched it properly, but there you go. We'll go for <laughs> Hovland. <laughs> See, normally I look at betting favourites and. Uh... And who's in hot runner form? I've not had the chance to do that. Um, I'm just going to go off the knowledge that it'll favour someone who's very good with the irons. I like Colin Morikawa. Yeah, I should go Solid for pick. Fitzpatrick. Oh, sneaky pick. Ooh. Controversial. It's not coming. Yeah. Not really. Well, I mean, going for the obvious pick hasn't really worked out very well for me so far. So, <laughs> <laughs> no one's picked Turtle Hatton for a while, have they? Well, he just got he married. Has a, he has he's got to go play. Yeah, yeah he has, he's just got married. He's got to go play golf for like a week and a half, two yeah. weeks. I mean, yeah, the most time he's had on TV is his bloody adverts he's been doing. See, I'm surprised. I was tempted to go Paul Casey. I don't know if he's playing or not, but um, I reckon he'll have a good week. I don't know if he's in. If he's playing. <laughs> I'm sure he'll have a good week if he's not playing as well, because he's got plenty of money and he's probably... <laughs> I, yeah, sure, I, I assume every single week for these PGA players is a good week. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if they win. Oh, I've just made $2 million this week. I love them. <laughs> uh, life could be worse. Imagine the tax bill on that at the end of the month. God. That's, why you, that's why you live in tax-free states, Tom. But yes, yeah. yeah, but no, but you don't. This the money doesn't come from the state; it comes from the PJ, which is centralized. So they'll all pay tax on that way they are on it. Well, same as lottery, yeah. Same as lottery mm-hmm. wins in America, you pay tax on it, don't you? It's because the prize fund doesn't come. No, but lottery is federal, though, isn't it? No, but because the prize fund doesn't come from the course or the state, I'm pretty sure what I read is it's taxed across the board. Oh. So. I thought you could be clever by living in like you know somewhere like Florida, Texas, and because it's, 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 it's like. It's like this, why certain uh, in, in major sports, certain players choose to go to those teams yeah. because they know they'll be taxed differently. But I think that's but it's different if it's salaried. This isn't a salary, is it? It's it's a prize. Okay. If that makes sense. Like yeah, like yeah, so you I can go play in China or and have no tax, but it's prize. It's not a given salary. I think that's why it falls outside of that. But I'm sure they're still fine anyway. Oh, I'm, oh, I'm so <laughs> sorry. No. Getting getting a hundred thousand back from your hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars is it's, it's such a horrible thing. It might have. be it must be quite tough. That's a moment of silence for these poor poor yes. PJ. Yes. <laughs> I'll get the little violins in the background. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Although there's an interesting stat on the money that if you made every cut on the PJ tour but then finished last, 
So you've got the lowest amount of money every round, every tournament, basically. You still made like $1.7 million or something in a year. In a year? Yeah. Oh, that reminds me. Um, Plus did sponsorship anyone... on top of that and all that sort of stuff. Did yeah. anyone see that uh, JT apparently cut a check to Michael Big Mike, Big Mike yeah. Pasaki? I saw the video of him handing it to him. He did it like, yeah. like, like you were tipping a waiter at a restaurant. Oh, he's doing that to get the fucking... <laughs> Excuse my French. The flipping. <laughs> he wants the full thing. He's, he's it... given, let's say he's given him 100k, but he knows by doing that, he's gained himself half a million on the 40 million social media yeah. spin now, doesn't he? He, always... well, he, th- ca- he that, came out and said, Oh, I don't well, care but... about winning. What a lie. <laughs> and, and that as well, it, may, it, may, it makes the brand that dropped him, or was it Rafa Red? It makes yeah. them look so much worse. Oh, this nice guy helping this, uh, you know, wannabe up and coming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you were genuine. doing that, like genuinely, and you only cared about doing that. You wouldn't need cameras there to film it. You'd just give it to him. You'd be like, "What are your digits, mate? I'll stick them in your bank account. I'll just send you a transfer." <laughs> no, <laughs> but no, you got a whole like camera crew there. <laughs> oh, like... And the thing is, he did. He didn't give it to some random uh, player, you know, who's just struggling to make cuts with this, that, the other, and trying and trying to get on. He did it to the only player who's made the news because of it. <laughs> yeah. But, and, and it so uh, happened uh, his dad was there at the same time. Oh, that was well timed, wasn't it? Yeah. Imagine how pissed you'd be if you're like one other person who'd been struggling for like eight years to get on the thing and then like <laughs> this, this just guy, this guy. Yeah. just because he cried when he made it to his dad <laughs> on the phone call. <laughs> like, that's what that's what the, that's what the PJ wants, mate. <laughs> what a chat, uh, well done to him, but like seriously, like well the he, thing is. I, I, I quite I, I enjoyed the story. I think Seb was very skeptical of, uh, of what happened. And I said, oh, it's a feel good story, but it, it, it does feel like that he's going to kind of become the guy that uh, he's going to become famous for being the guy that cried because he made the tour. I'm sure he and won't that, care being remembered. Yeah, I'm sure he'll make we, we'd all happily money. become famous for being the one that cried because they made the tour. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, too much money. I'll cry, I'll cry on this podcast if it gets if next to me, JT handing me a big fat check. Well, I'm actually you put like a, like, it was just only like a grand. <laughs> uh, I, <laughs> I, like, I'll, I'll pay for your next it. tournament entry fee. <laughs> I reckon a hundred bags. Do you reckon? Yeah. Nah. 25. No, a hundred bags isn't that much to JT. He'll get it back in all 25. the sponsorship. Yeah. 25, he'll be like, oh, this is like the salary, the, the, this the tournament fee entry you'll need for like a year to, to, to keep going. I mean, JT is worth, his net worth is $30 million, yet his career earnings are $42 million. Yeah, but worth is different to earnings, though, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, but he's made $42 million, then how much sponsorship has he got on top of that? Yeah, and he'll have he splashed a bit. Not all on assets, yeah. but... It, that would only work out if they've never spent any money in their life. Yeah, and and and, and all of the, most of the money they do spend, fair enough, will be some on, on assets, but yeah. some of it will just be. That still means he spent twelve million in his golfing I mean, career. Would, would you not? Yeah. Well, yeah, but he's only been pro for six, seven years. Yeah, but uh, yeah, but that's not that was the that's, thing of um that's that's a that's a couple of houses, a that's boat, true. like. However, yeah, much- those count as assets, so they can add spot. to your value. But the, 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 this relates to the thing of um, there was an interesting news article not too long ago about how most professional sports players are actually living check to check because they have such poor finance management. Obviously, not saying that for JT, but because of almost the fact that you know for these guys they have to splash the cash to make it look like that they're doing well in a way, and and then they end up supporting like fifty people from. Yeah, yeah, this is yeah, nah, 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 nah. He definitely makes more than that. He's definitely worth more than that. Jordan Spieth in 2019, for example, made 30 million in a year off sponsorship deals. Yeah, but JT's lost half of his though. <laughs> JT maybe, made 23, maybe, maybe six months ago, it was much million, 23 million in 2019 off sponsorships. But that was quite I interesting, mean, though. He made. I, I imagine. Made I imagine. I imagine there's probably some domestic. money being uh, sh- shuffled around the world somewhere. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure. Not, not accusing JT if he's watching, but you know. Well, or <laughs> his accountant. Probably, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shuffling it to some apology letters to the LGBT community <laughs> after earlier this year. That's where a lot of it's gone, probably. Yeah, that's going to go down <laughs> steeply this year without the after end one, isn't it? <laughs> 
Has he signed a new sponsor yet, or what, what's he? Not a clothing one. No. No. That'll be quite bad. I don't think he can do that because it just shows he doesn't care. He'd be like, whatever, I'd get another sponsor. <laughs> Instead of like learning from it and getting that sponsor back, he's just like, well, whatever. I'm just going to start with Nike now. But, 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 but should he then be forced to, to almost go back to that sponsor? Or, or surely he's allowed to go to another sponsor and be like, well, you know, they didn't say fire me. Oh yeah, no. I say he, he can, but it just doesn't look great if he does. Yeah, it's more of a look thing, is it? Because then it shows there was no remorse, there was no care. No, but he's, he's yeah. waited long enough, though, hasn't he? It's, it's... it's been like six months. Isn't six months? Isn't that long? Yeah, it's long. It's long enough in the world of sponsorship, isn't it? No, no, but it's you, not. You, not you, don't, you, don't, you, you don't. You don't. You don't. You don't see any. You don't see any professional sports team not wearing, you know, branded uh, sponsorship because they're, they're loyal to their old one. You don't see, you know, when Liverpool switched across from Nike to New Balance, they took Nike, they took New Balance to goddamn court to switch across to Nike. Yeah, but that's different because Liverpool, Liverpool didn't do sl- have any slander or anything. Yeah. They've lost yeah. the other contract. New, New Balance didn't drop Liverpool. Yeah, for, for being like for using some slurs, did they? They just go. Oh, but well, even if they, even if they did, and Liverpool wanted to go across to someone else. Surely it's their decision. You know, they don't... It's a bad example. Like Liverpool had struggled for sponsorship deals because they hadn't won anything for 30 years. That's why they teamed up with New Balance. And as soon as they won something, they go, oh, we want a better deal now. And plus, that's not a single person. <laughs> that's a whole organisation. Yeah. But obviously, Liverpool, you know, uh, part, part of the minority owner is LeBron, who just happens to have a billion-dollar contract with Nike anyway, and they can just sell all their stuff. Well, no, so you're, many... no your, your main owner that owns... Boston Red Sox, all of that. Most of them are with Adidas and Nike as well, so it's more than not LeBron. LeBron oh, would have had so. little to no influence on any of it at all. He's just sitting there oh, breaking I, it in, mate. Yeah. <laughs> he, he's got you know, no when, he, when, when he invested in Liverpool, they he invested a damn good time. So uh, get like basically get it? yeah. Get, get financial advice from LeBron James. That, that That's the takeaway from this podcast. No, don't no, get financial advice from tell. LeBron James. Get financial advice from whoever's advising LeBron James yeah. what to do with his money. <laughs> just because someone rich has put some money... Like, see, Ab, if you had billions of dollars in 2014, I'm sure you would have put some money in Liverpool. That's not financial I advice. Would've. That's just being rich. <laughs> I, I would have. Tell me. I, I would have also, exactly. would've, would've also would have invested in Amazon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's not financially sound. He's just rich. I'm sure he's put lots of money elsewhere that's gone tits up. So start start your own. I will only take financial start advice start from Shaquille O'Neal and no one else. <laughs> <laughs> now he is a wizard. <laughs> so. No, he's not. He's just been told to do that. <laughs> His financial accountant did not go to him and go buy 255 guys' chains, did he? <laughs> He did that. Someone would have done, yeah, because it's such a smart thing to do in America is to buy a bunch of chains of fast food. Right, well, we've got to become one of the key biggest. Key <laughs> we've got a key here. Yeah, we've okay. got a key. But anyway, <laughs> we'll, we'll wrap it up. Obviously, we've got our predictions in for next week. Obviously, well, this week, obviously, I've gone for Hovland. Tom's gone for Fitzpatrick. Fitzpatrick and see yeah, has gone for the Asian sensation, Colin Morikawa. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm giving my own name to Colin here. That's how much I love it. I don't know if that nickname really works, though, either, does it? No, he's not. He's not. He's, he is American. Yeah, he's not. But, you know, <laughs> yes, he, he's got an Asian heritage somewhere. Yeah, okay. All right, there we go. We'll end it there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, right. well, well, see yeah. you next time, guys, on episode number 94. <sighs> yes. Like and subscribe. I'm, I'm not going to react. I'm just not, not going to react.